A college professor explains why rockets can't work in space. Or, when translated into coherent English, a supposed professor exposes himself on the internet by having no idea how rockets work or how vacuums work either, in the most embarrassing way possible. It's going to be fun on the bun, folks. Mm, well, basically, it's just impossible. It cannot work in the vacuum of a space. Okay, so it's nice to get right into the meat of the argument instead of dancing around the point for several minutes until only the most bored of internet pedants bother to stick around to correct you. So it's a brave foot forward. Shame it's one of the stupidest things I've ever heard in my life. But it is what it is. It's just impossible. Physically, it's impossible. Oh well, never mind. The professor, who is totally a real professor TM, said it was impossible physically. Never mind the fact that it is not only possible, but literally functions based on incredibly basic rules of physics, that if you understand them, even to a simplistic level, you will realise that it makes a ton of sense. Yeah. So, uh, what about all the scientists? Are they all lying? Or... Wait, seriously? There's actually someone there? God damn, that's... Depressing, to say the least. What poor bastard ended up signing up for Dr. Dipshit's class for very smart guys? Unless, of course, he am fake student and is there to ask questions to make this guy seem more correct and convincing than he actually is. But a moron who doesn't understand reality would never do that. They are always the most honest of all the guys is. Also, are all the scientists lying? A fucking no? That would not make any sense. No conspiracy that involves thousands and thousands and thousands of people from all around the world from different backgrounds and philosophies, when they all say the same exact thing about an element of reality, chances are that thing is just true and not some kind of cover-up. The thing is that we have understood the word science is wrong. Look. The word science is wrong? Okay, this ought to be a good one. Since all science means is knowledge and the idea of science is to remove bias and get the most accurate answer to whatever question possible. The overall question being, how does the everything work? Not sure how that being what it is and what it attempts to do can be wrong, but I imagine the answer will be enlightening to say the least. I'm a scientist, I'm a mechanical engineer and I have a master's degree in technical physics. Well, personally, I think you should get a refund for that degree because apparently it left you even more stupid than before you started it. I mean, look at the guy. He's built like a tank. Someone has clearly been reminding him about leg day, but unfortunately, no one's ever reminded him about the most important exercise day of all, brain day. And I work as a research and development scientist. But when you say a scientist, you think that these guys are out there and they're just exploring the universe and trying to find the secrets. You think that scientist isn't the right word. Oh, well. Sorry me, old mate. Anyone doing science, even badly, is a scientist. Also, I don't know what that's got to do with the fact that you don't understand that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. That's pretty freaking devastating for an apparent engineer not to know. But that's how rockets work in a vacuum. And for the life of me, I have no idea how you could not know that. Of the universe. No, it's not like that. They pay us to do certain things, certain tasks. And if they don't pay me, I'm not going to go search those stuff. Right, so your point is that not all scientists do specific tasks. Or is it that unless they're being paid, they won't look into a certain thing? Well, one, yes, of course they specialise. Science is unbelievably huge thing. Of course they have smaller fields of specific expertise. But that doesn't mean that the other thing is true. Plenty of scientists are interested in aspects outside their fields. And most scientists understand the fundamental shit. Because without it, you end up saying really stupid things like rockets don't work in space. Uh, even if there are some people like me who do think about it. Uh... Perfect timing of that, uh, my dude. Okay, let's break it down and see how it compares with what you end up saying. My understanding, as a layman without any fancy sounding degree, of how rockets do is this. You have a rocket, you burn fuel, which of course causes particles to push away from the rocket, usually in the form of flamey looking boys. So if that pushes stuff away from the rocket, that means according to equal and opposite boys, they push off of the rocket pushing it in the other direction. And since there's nothing holding it still or getting in its way, causing resistance, it'll go and it won't really stop until it hits a strong gravitational field or a planet or whatever. 
or, or they have some kind of control rockets that push it in other directions. And yes, I did check with the science guy and he agreed that rockets go burr. The thing is that since childhood they tell us that the rockets do work and the NASA is sending stuff up, up into the space. And Well, isn't that just freaking typical? You can always tell that someone is talking total shit when they say to you, they told everyone X from childhood and everyone believed it for no reason or something to that effect. It's almost universally bullshit. Like even if something a lot of school kids learned gets overturned, no one says, that's what they lied to you about at school for no reason. You just explain the updated science because you know it's right and we all move on. But if you want to overturn science that is, you know, real and a fact, you have to pretend they were always trying to trick you and you don't want to be a trick guy. So try my new thing, TM. It'll make you smarter than everyone you know. Which is good news because you've been the dumbest one out of the group so far. Hooray! So you're just programmed since childhood. You're not gonna be questioning that program. non fucking sense. A. Kids question shit all the time. And B. People question things they know all the time. Now, there are things more hardwired than others, but that doesn't change the fact that if you look up the explanation of how rockets work in space, the explanation, whilst not only being, you know, true, it also makes perfect sense. I don't know what yours is yet. You would think you would open with it, but whatever. I reckon there's a not insignificant chance that it makes no sense whatsoever because you have no idea what the hell you're talking about. And even if you do question that program, people will laugh at you. People will judge you. They think you're stupid. No, when you question things, people tend to want to explain to you how things work and help you to better understand. And if they're like me and they don't necessarily understand a thing, we'll go out and seek an explanation they can understand and then share it with you. What makes people laugh at you is when you say, science is wrong because I think rockets don't work in space and you are all big dum-dums. Then people will laugh at you and rightly so because you are being stupid and more importantly arrogant which is always hilarious. And sometimes they'll just be disappointed because it's also extremely sad. So you start, you end up losing your jobs and friends and stuff. So the scientists... I'm sorry, who the hell loses their jobs and friends from just asking questions? That's not how that works. If you have some actual questions that no one can provide an answer for and it turns out that you have answers to them that make sense and you can prove those answers right, what happens is you upturn all of science and win all of the Nobel Prizes always. But if you just don't get it, and insist that all scientists are liars without ever once trying to understand what the science actually says and teach people wrong things that are demonstrably wrong all the time, then yeah, I guess bad things could happen. Unless, of course, you aren't a scientist when literally no one will give a shit. They don't do that to themselves. It's just, it's a stupid thing to do. Even if it's the truth, but you just don't do it. Who? I would love to know what scientists believe that well-established and understood concepts of science are actually lies. Because frankly, I don't want those morons sciencing all over themselves and then getting it in their eyes. We have to protect them from themselves, clearly. The reason that you do think that rockets work in the vacuum of space is because of the third law of motion. The third law of motion states, as it, it says that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Oh right, so you have heard of it. Well, fantastic news. Now the question is, how does he get this catastrophically wrong to the point where apparently he fears for his career as a totally legit science guy who's not stupid and just doesn't understand a thing so everyone else is just a bunch of liars? You know, a perfectly reasonable position. So well, it's really easy to test that. Let's put this into action. Uh, an action is, for example, I'm going to start punching now. So I'm punching and I don't feel any... Reactions. Do you see a reaction? Um, actually, yes, you do. I mean, seriously, if you are not understanding something this simple, I can only assume you got your degree from a packet of friggin' cornflakes. When you punch the air, you will feel the air against your hands, and the air will move. In fact, one of those popular martial arts showing off things is to blow out a candle by punching near it. Now I wonder how that works. Idiot. I don't feel any reaction. But then I start punching the wall. I feel the reaction. 
I mean, you can try it. You feel the reaction. Amazing. Well, then I guess space doesn't exist or something, because that's what his point he thinks he's making is. That if there's nothing there, then there's not equal and opposite boys. It's just that apparently he doesn't know what, like, particles are. I hope to cheese an onion, Christ, that he's just lying about being a professor or educated at all, because the alternative is just really, really scary. If it starts hurting and if I punch harder, it's gonna bleed, and if I punch even harder, it's gonna break my bones. Well, at least he doesn't think he can punch through walls, but I can only assume he came to that conclusion through exhaustive testing, mostly using his head, but to be fair, we've all done that at some point in our lives. Me, every video. At some point, I need to go test a wall with my face to check that it still gives the delightful skull ringing. Ah, uh, really drowns out the stupid. So it seems like the third law of motion, when in order for you to get the reaction, the equal and opposite reaction, you have to apply your action on something. Right, you are applying the action on the stuff that comes out of the rocket and on the rocket itself. Both those things are involved in that. I think what you're confusing is the fact that there is effectively nothing in space. The stuff has to bounce off a separate thing, but it doesn't. Like, if I simply throw a rock in space, that action would make me move. Maybe not a whole lot, but it would. Better still, think about this. On Earth, if you fire a gun, what happens? Recoil, right? The action of the gun and bullet firing pushes against the body of the gun. And if you don't control it with your weight and stance, there's a chance it'll knock you over. Bearing in mind it will do that with a wall in front of you or not. Now, what do you think happens if you did it in space? Exactly the same, except you won't have any ground or significant gravity to keep you still. So you will go backwards, end of story. If it's nothing, then you don't get the reaction. For example, if I'm now pushing, I'm, I'm now pushing myself, okay, I'm, I'm pushing my hand, and no reaction, I don't feel any pushback. Oh, holy shit, this man is an idiot. Seriously, this is like something kids learn in middle school. His claim that he was taught anything as a child is totally unbelievable, considering he clearly doesn't know shit. But then I push the wall, and I feel the pushback. So... You cannot just push nothingness and expect something to happen. <sighs> and you cannot listen to a brainless person and expect something intelligent to fall out of their moron hole. We are learning all sorts of things today, aren't we? And by learning, I of course mean, oh my god, won't somebody stop this man? There has to be something. Tell me, but what about if I, for example, uh, in a skateboard and I have a ball, a bowling ball, let's say, and I throw it, I go backwards. Right, so if you didn't hear that because the audio is wank, he asked if throwing a bowling ball while stood on a skateboard, will I go backwards? And yeah, that's what I have been talking about. In fact, it could be any object, even something small and light, but the bowling ball would give you a more obvious effect. So fine, not sure how that doesn't completely shit on your whole thing, but I'm sure you have something dumb to say about it. Look, when you are standing on a skateboard, and then you are pushing a 15 pound bowling ball. Mm -hmm. That 15 pound bowling ball has a static inertia. It means it wants to stay static, it doesn't mm -hmm. want to move. So when you're pushing that, you're pushing yourself back. Right, if you did that in space, sans the skateboard, it would do exactly the same thing. You would be pushing off of it. The rocket shooting out flames and shit is exactly the same thing. It's like he has all the pieces to the puzzle and then just starts eating them instead and shouting about how the puzzle can now not be solved because he f***ing ate them. If you think that the third law of motion works in these kind of cases, then you can just throw a pen. Just see if you go backwards when you're throwing a pen. You will! Oh my god! Does he think that heavier objects have some kind of magical different physical properties. Throw a box of pen. Throw the fucking desk. You'll notice the objects, assuming you can throw them, will have different levels of effect. But it's the same effect. Christ, this man is so infuriatingly dense. If you threw him off the skateboard, you'd probably break the fucking sound barrier. Throw a balloon. Throw a, a light object. And... Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, you have a balloon. And you can push the balloon and see if you go back. Like seriously, it's staggering to think that someone can apparently know what a couple things are and then 
fail to understand the implications of those things so hard. Throw a million balloons, you will see a difference, especially in an environment that has nothing holding you in place. It's so simple and obvious, but it goes whoosh over his head like a misthrown bowling ball. Oh, who am I kidding? It didn't go over his head. It clearly fucking replaced it. Yeah. Or a ping pong ball. It doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. uh, the same thing when you're pushing a car, you know? Have you ever tried it when your a car is broken and you're pushing it? At the beginning, it doesn't move. It's heavy. And then after some time, it just moves a sword. It's, it got out of that static inertia. It's now moving. Yeah, it required more energy to move it, mostly because you are on Earth with lots of forces fighting against you. Now tell me, what would happen if you pushed that car while you were in space? Fucking one of you is moving. Actually, both of you, but my point is made. You certainly won't be still. And say you had dozens of people all around the car, pushing off one after another. Eventually, that car is going to be moving way quicker. And if you somehow had thousands of people pushing away in rapid succession, you would end up making the car move super goddamn fast. So close and yet so stupid. So it's easier to push it. It's not uh, that difficult. So in order to get this reaction, you have to push against something. Otherwise, it's not happening. The only thing I'm currently pushing against is my eyes in frustration at how obtuse you are. But hey, at least I get to see lots of pretty colors. This guy, the reason it goes up is this high velocity and hot gases that exit the exhaust of the rocket engine will push against the ground first and then it takes off and it goes up. Right, so yeah, the first major thing that it's going to be pushing against is the ground and then the air and then finally itself. But it's never not pushing against itself. You made the demonstration, but for reasons beyond me, simply refuse to put two and two together. Now that's not quite right. You are putting two and two together. It's just the answer you keep ending up with is banana. Wait, before you go, I have something super important to tell you. It's life or death. It will change everything forever. Nope. Wait, it's gone. Oh well, probably wasn't important. But while I have you, don't forget to comment, subscribe and notify. And if you want more of my smexy voice, check out Mrs. Six channel Spoon Star Stories, where I narrate and voice all the videos. And she does the work. And if you want to support the channel, check out the merch store for cool t-shirts, or check out Patreon, memberships and PayPal to support directly. Finally, Follow me on the medias of social to get completely pointless guff and to keep up on the latest releases. Oh, I just remembered what I was going to tell you. Whatever you do, don't touch the-